everyone. Welcome back to EGX at London's Earl's Court here on day one, where Andy and I have just played The Evil Within, which is a scary horror game. Would you say it's a scary horror game? I would say it's a scary horror game. There's quite a few things in there that actually I thought were pretty unsettling, to all be honest. Right. Uh, first of all, I wanted to talk about the mansion. So we were playing a section of the game. It's uh, chapter nine, I believe. And we're in a, a mansion exactly like the one from Resident Evil. I mean, it's uh, from the outside, it looks just like the Spencer Mansion. It's got the staircases going up either side. It's very kind of wood paneled, ornate. I mean, uh, Evil Within is developed by Tango Gameworks and headed up by Shinji Mikami, who is the man responsible for Resident Evil. So, so you think he kept a blueprint from the Resident Evil Mansion? Yeah, he was like, oh, it's just we'll just use that again. It is scary. There's uh, all sorts of unsettling noises that happen, like you'll just hear chuckling and like children's laughter as you walk around. Um, and it's full of that kind of Resident Evil 1 style artwork everywhere. There's like uh, oil paintings of people being guillotined. Just the kind of hor horrific art that no one would ever hang on their walls. All the mod is, cons. Yeah. yeah. Statues of gruesome decapitation. Yeah. Why did we even get this? Yeah. Like you need a very specialist art dealer. It's all very old school survival horror. Very traditional. Almost to a fault. I don't know, maybe not. I Is really it liked it. I, l I really liked it, but then I love those old games. So. Yeah. Feels like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't a bit with survival horror because obviously everyone's a little down on Resi for going down the action route. Yeah. But when something copies almost trope for trope the old school survival horror. Yeah. Well, people are mistrustful of how, how samey and old fashioned it feels. Well, that was the thing about. Um, Evil Within was that it felt very much like a cross between Resident Evil and Silent Hill to me and that kind of brings me to the second point I wanted to mention which was the character of Ruvik. So he's this guy in a hood, you've probably seen him in the trailers. At various points while you're playing he will he will just turn up randomly and the, the world will go blue and you'll start hearing these creepy noises and then Ruvik will turn up and he is indestructible. And, and all powerful. He, all powerful. And Almost he will, all powerful. And he will chase you around. Uh, well, not even chase you around, just walk towards you menacingly, yeah. which is somehow worse. <laughs> it is worse. And you can hide from him. Yeah. So in, he's all powerful, but not all seeing, apparently. You can like, like jump into a cupboard. Well, that's why it reminded me of Silent Hill in that respect, because he's very much like Pyramid Head in the way that... Uh, just relentless. And, and the way that the world changes when he arrives. Like that's it, true. Like he turns into that sort of darker, weirder version of the world. So it feels like the entire world is on his side, not just a single yeah, enemy. But exactly. You're suddenly in Rubik's world. And you know, you've got to get away from it. All right, all right. So that, that was super scary. Another thing I want to talk about is uh, a specific lock in the demo that we played, which was based around giving some guy brain surgery, which seems like a very inefficient way to lock More than things. a single guy, in fact. There are three brains, like exposed brains in laboratory type setups that you have to probe with an electrode yeah. in order to stimulate certain parts that respond to certain emotions. I mean, it's still in the guy's all... head, like while you're poking it. Yeah, he's still conscious, so uh, so that's nice. And all three brains are plumbed into a central lock in the main hallway of the mansion. Yeah. Do you find that scary? I mean, it's it's gross and unsettling and weird. Yeah, well, it was. Uh, yeah, I did. It was asking you to like stimulate the fear center of the guy's brain. Uh, that did feel nasty. And actually. so you're just sort yeah. of jabbing it with it's like electrodes. You've already decapitated him, exposed his brain. It's about as bad as it gets. And then you're just going to jab him right in the fear center. Yeah. To be fair to the protagonist, Sebastian Castellanos, he didn't seem that phased by it. He was like, "Well, you got to do what you got to do, poking around." Again, it's like that Silent Hill thing where you don't really know what's happening. I see what you mean. That is more Silent Hill than Resident Evil. Yeah. The Resident Evil characters didn't so much have tortured histories or or yeah you know, they were all just gung ho SWAT guilt. team guys yeah. they were like yeah I'm a cop yeah okay. I'm a SWAT team well maybe um, Sebastian has more depth than I gave him credit for because I didn't actually find that and okay. I just assumed he's you know he's a Police detective. Something else that's quite Resident Evil brings me to the next point, which is the enemies. They're all horrific. They're all like missing chunks of their head. They're all wrapped in barbed wire. Bits are dropping off them. And I'm not sure if they're like they're zombies or if they're just like tortured people or whatever they are. But I mean, they've got to be undead, you would they're think. They're zombie-like. Because yes. you shoot them, bits come off them, and they, they keep on coming. And you have to torch them to you stop them You have to them torch the bodies. Again, like the Resident Evil remake, where you had to torch the zombies to stop them coming back as crimson heads. Here, you toss a match on the body. They go up like crazy. They must be soaked in paraffin or something. Yeah, yeah the combat's very that kind of Resident Evil 4 style, over the shoulder shooting. Um, and again, like those early survival horror games, ammo is super scarce. So you'll have like four or five bullets at a time, maybe a couple of shotgun shells, but also a weapon called the Agony Crossbow. And you can uh, make ammo for that by disarming some of the traps, which uh, you find around on the wall. Well, it's not like there's a shortage of horrible monsters. There's no, that Ruvik, is true. there's that terrifying spider woman that we've seen in yeah, diff a different gameplay demo. Uh, there's that butcher guy who 
is working away in his true, meat true. He's cutting full of nasty guys. room. Yeah. yeah, but it brings me to the final point I want to talk about, which is the uh, the traps. So I mentioned there are, there are traps on the wall throughout the mansion. Um, you can disarm those. There's mm. like a uh, a mini game that you have to pass, and you get trap pieces. But there are also kind of uh, QTE style traps. So one that we were playing, you're walking down a corridor, a rope attaches to your leg and starts to pull you towards like a meat grinder which for some reason had been installed in this house. I don't know if that was an original feature. They're like or... car wash rollers, but with yes, spikes all over spikes. them instead of uh, brushes. Yeah. But you seems, can visualize that. It seems like that's going to be a recurring thing. I've seen trailers where there have been other kind of traps. like A lot of corridors with various kinds of spikes yeah. coming sideways or down or swirling around, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, just from what I've played of it, I was really impressed with the atmosphere of it. If it had that very old school survival horror, which I love, like very slow paced, but uh, with a kind of constant creeping sense of dread, which uh, I mean, I'm all about when I'm looking to uh, have a bit of video game escapism. Well, I'm interested to see how it turns out. I feel like it's been criticized for not moving survival horror anywhere new. Yeah. But I think for a certain player, that kind of retro survival horror in yeah. a next-gen, shiny, graphical kind of skin is going to be what they're looking for. Yeah, I mean, it's deeply unpleasant on a level I don't think even Silent Hill and Resident Evil were just because of the graphical fidelity of things like dudes' brains and people's heads falling mm. off. And I don't know, I found it uh, very unpleasant, but in a compelling way, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, that was The Evil Within on day one here at London's EGX 2014. Thanks for watching. Join us for more next time. See you then. Bye.